We work with Big Commerce a lot, and I'm joined by Brent Bellum, CEO of Big Commerce, um, to chat a little bit more technically about uh, how we can do digital transformation. Brent? Well, hello, everybody. Raise your hand if you were in the earlier session that I participated in in this room. OK, that's a lot of you, so cool. I can avoid repeating myself. CEO of Big Commerce from Austin, Texas, though Big Commerce originally founded here in Sydney, Australia in 2009, Sydney company. And as I said in the last session, uh, Big Commerce is now the single highest rated B2B platform in the world on G2, which is where companies go and rate their software. So when we talk about B2B e-commerce, um, it's from the perspective of the platform that B2B sellers rate highest of any in the world. So uh, we're talking about technology here, and uh, the summary of this talk talks about digital, digital transformation for B2B has been a long time coming. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Okay, well, um, if you, it's, it's hard. B2B is not one thing. There are so many different types of business-to-business -business sellers there are. Finished goods producers, intermediate goods producers, intermediaries. Uh, it's just a thousand, and there's a thousand different legacy systems that they have to use on the back end. They have different types of buyers, not one size fits all. You know, you could have contractors, commercial, uh, and there's so many different flavors of B2B. And one of the things that made B2B so hard before Magento is before Magento came along, almost every B2B platform was created specific to a vertical, a category and a type of seller. And their functionality was optimized for it, which made it very limited in its capabilities. It didn't have generalist e-commerce product functionality. That all changed with Magento. And the history of Magento, of course, open source started around 2007 or 8. It was originally built for B2C. But then it's open source. And so people started adding all these apps to the apps ecosystem. And there were quite a few B2B apps. And they noticed around 2013, 2014, that a lot of B2B sellers were using Magento plus four or five of the most common B2B apps. And Magento at that point in time said, well, let's actually go to Forrester and Gartner and argue that we're a B2B platform too. They got their head of product marketing to do that. They then demoed Magento plus these four or five apps. And lo and behold, very quickly, Forrester and Gartner have them as a leader in the B2B quadrant and wave, which was very provocative because they were the only generalist platform against a bunch of B2B only specialists who cost a lot more and did a lot less in general. That's when it really opened up because Magento was so much more flexible than those other platforms. The reason I'm telling you this story is because I learned from it. When I took over for our found, from our founders eight years ago, I talked to one of the Magento employees who had been part of that transition at Magento. This may be 2015. And I said, we're going to do the same thing. We were originally built for B2C as a SaaS platform. But I said, well, let's look at our B2B extensions. And we saw a lot of people trying, starting to use this for B2B. And that then evolved into, eventually, our buying the two most popular apps in our apps marketplace, one called Bundle B2B, which had a half dozen of the most important and popular uh, B2B functionalities, as well as uh, B2B Ninja, which was specifically for quoting. And now we're bringing all that functionality into the core, which Nigel will be demoing. But the point is what you get now that you could not get before, let's call it 10 years ago, starting with Magento, which is on-premise software, and then coming to BigCommerce, which is the first SaaS platform, is a platform that gives you all of the extraordinary functionality used in B2C, composable, you know, website design, user experience, but as well with B2B specific needs. And so you can really adapt us to your specific requirements. So 
part of it is that the technology hadn't caught up. You could, you could put the blame on B2B companies and say, well, you know, they're not as digitally savvy. Maybe they don't have the same margins in some cases. But I think as much of the explanation is the actual software vendors actually bringing to you something that is really easy to use, low cost, and flexible. Yeah, I mean, um, we as, so as an agency, we've been around for 20 years. We've gone through different seasons. Uh, we work with a lot of monolithic platforms. Uh, like we, we didn't work with Magento, but similar. Uh, and 2018 is when we formalized our um, partnership with Bitcom. And we assess different SaaS platforms. And for us, what appealed about BigCommerce is the open SaaS um, messaging around around, and it's something that hasn't been you haven't swayed from the whole time I've known you. But um, where it's a platform that provides a lot of functionality, but we can customize on top of that, and and we do like every project we have some sort of unique use case that we're solving for, and that really suits like us as an agency that we uh, can problem solve. We can really design for the user, and we're not just pumping out you know one after the other, same sort of functionality. So um, for us, it's a, it's a great um, example of a SaaS technology that allows flexibility. So we're going to have a look at the, um, the bias model. Um, we might roll the, the, roll the tape. Does that still happen? Play the video. Um, but um, I've been playing around with this new bias model from um, BitCommerce. It's um, built on that uh, BAB edition. And what they've released is a front-end um, portal. So what we're looking at here is what a buyer would see through the website. So they have a, a portal that's very sort of targeted towards B2B functions. So it's not cluttered with what we see on the B2C version. Uh, so this is what, this can be incorporated into any B2C website as well, but it can be enabled in the account area. So B2B buyers get this extra functionality. So it's very, specific to what they need to do. And what they need to do is perhaps look at orders from the rest of their company, so other buyers in their company, seeing all of that together. Um, maybe look at invoices of what they have to pay um, because maybe they're ordering on account, but they need a record of where they're at with that and be able to pay that. Uh, so this is a new feature, uh, I believe, um, Brent. So um, being able to access invoices natively and to be able to pay directly from those invoices um, and this is all, and this is all out of the box big commerce as well. We haven't um, customized any of this except for a little bit of the UI. Uh, we've got quotes here. So this is where a buyer can build a, a, a quote, a basket of goods that they're interested to buy. They can submit that to a, um, a seller. So it's really built for that workflow of working through what they're going to buy at what price, making sure that it's, it's right so that they can then order it. Um, there's ways where a, a buyer can shortcut to um, products that they, they typically buy. So this is where all products that they've bought before are on one page so they can replenish very easily and build a, um, build a new quote very easily or, or just check out um, directly. Uh, so this is all, so what we've got here is a, a quote being built. Um, we've got address management, we've got um, user management as well. So uh, as, a, as a customer, I can set add new users to our company account if I'm an admin. Um, so it's really built as a good baseline. We talked in the talk before about this being a really good sort of like base level for B2B. And this is typical, a SaaS platform typically caters to the majority of use cases. Uh, and then we as an agency can use that and take that further for, the, for our clients. Um, so you can see here it's got, um, it's fully integrated into a normal website where we can get access to all of that information if we need. Um, we talk with some clients where they've got very technical uh, product data that um, particular personas need to access, uh, whereas some buyers might not necessarily need that, but it's very useful to have all of that together. Um, and then here we've got a quote that's been built We've got the option to add, add more to the quote at this point. Uh, so this is access to all the product data in that big commerce account. Um, and we can access products with multiple variants and add, um, add quantities that we're looking for.
and we'll see here a message flow so we can trigger a message that goes to the um, the sales representative so that they can have a conversation so they can get a bit more context around this quote submission um, and they can handle that on the back end when that comes through. So here we've got um, th this demo store, it's, it's just a demo store, but it's actually a client of ours called Itskins, which makes uh, very nice phone cases. Um, if you, I think we have one for everyone that, that's turned up, or if, you, if we don't, we've got it at our stand, so please come by and, and visit our stand. Um, but this, these phone cases, we've got a custom logo embossed on them, so this is sort of an example of how that could be done through this buyer's portal where um, a buyer can upload artwork to be, to be added to the order. So, um, and then, so then the buyer's gonna check his order, submit it, and I think we're gonna jump into the back end now. So we can see all of our quotes. This is a new one that's open. Now this is the Big Commerce admin. So what, as a Big Commerce user, you can access to control your store. This specifically is the B2B edition interface. So sales consultants can go through here. They can manage the different companies and the different accounts that they um, they service. They can um, add different users to those accounts. Here we can see the quote that's just come through. Uh, so this is what. I, I would see as a, as a seller. I can see there's a message here. I know that this is urgent. I know they want a custom order, so I know what I need to do about this. So I can comment back um, to, that, to that buyer. And then because it's, a, because it's urgent, because it's custom, I'm gonna add some extra cost to this to cover those, um, those services that we're doing. So, we can create products on the fly here. So um, maybe this artwork is uh, particularly complex or something I need to qu quote this specifically so I can build a product on the fly and add that to the order. Um, I've got a couple here that I've prepared already. So add to quote for the delivery fee, add to quote for the custom engraving. And that's that way as the seller, I can build out that, that quote to, to get that to a finalization point. And I can also look, review the pricing. Maybe these guys are great customers. I'm going to give them a discount anyway. So I'm going to um, add a 10% discount and I'm going to send that off to the, to the buyer. So it brings up a, an email interface. It formats that order into an email template, um, which has a checkout now button at the bottom um, so that when that buyer gets that email, they can take action straight away. Anything you want to add? Yeah. No, I think you did yeah, okay. great. Okay, so maybe whilst it's running, um, so this, yeah, I, I would say is a uh, Feel like a really good level of functionality for a buyer's portal. Uh, this is typically where we would start, um, but there's things that happen that are more complex and more unique to the, to the company that we, we would work for. Um, and I think to my, to my question before about why has there been the delay, I think you know, if you look at this room, compare it to the number of people downstairs, there's a lot of maturity in the B2C space, but maybe not so much in the, in the B2B, and I think it's um, maybe because some of the use cases are a bit more unique. And um, what we see working with clients is there's challenges around things like system integrations. Like this is all the things that we can put out to the customer, but what's behind that to make sure we've got live pricing, we've got um, real time inventory. We can see um, if there's not inventory, when that's going to arrive. Um, We've got customer specific pricing that we can do with big commerce. There's a, a whole lot more complexity that we tend to deal with. And I've seen that as being a bit of a barrier, um, particularly around like, even when we work with manufacturers, the quality of the product data is not necessarily fit for going online. So even though they might design and manufacture the, the product, 
that hasn't necessarily been put through a, a process where they capture all that information and make that available online. So we, we do a lot of PIM implementations, so product information management tools, uh, where we can put in a collaborative tool where different parts of the business can work together to build that quality. Uh, so it's not one of those things that just sits on the shelf and never going to happen. Um, but a lot of the B2B work we do is a lot about system integration and really that architecture to, um, to suit the business. Uh, we do uh, headless architecture um, where we can basically put a front end skin over the top of multiple systems. Um, so we might be sourcing uh, the inventory source of truth from an ERP or an OMS, for example. Um, and we're not trying to replicate data in different systems. We're more just working from a single source of truth. Um, so we find that architecture really opens us up to solving like solutions for these more complex problems. Um, and that's what, yeah, that's what we do as, as a company to, um, to deliver that, like fill that gap between a base level technology and the, and the solution that we need to deliver. And one of the things we really focus on, so many B2B sellers are running off an ERP. So we're going around to the major ERPs and, and trying to partner with them and get either a direct integration, which we have with some, like Acumatica, or one or more sort of third-party iPaaS integrations with NetSuite and Sage and so many others that are uh, you know, basically there to prevent the customer from having to do that complex integration. Now, if you're off some esoteric or long-tail ERP, uh, you may have to do that integration yourself, but at least all the APIs are there and the pattern is repeatable. And uh, some Julian mentioned before, we've got automotive clients that have systems that just aren't API enabled. So we have to do um, extract data in ways that we can make it more API enabled. So um, that's something that we do do as well. And that's where we see systems that are sort of older, older systems that aren't API first, uh, like the, the SaaS platforms that we work with. And one area of opportunity there, we own at Big Commerce one other subsidiary company called Feedonomics. Feedonomics is the world's biggest enterprise solution for data feed management, catalog management, typically between a retailer or a brand. And search engines like Google, affiliate networks, social networks, and even marketplaces. A growth area for them, though, is in essence, is in essence B2B data ingestion. So if you need to use ETL to get data out of some legacy systems as a manufacturer and into your e-com platform, but have that data enhanced and transformed into exactly what your e-com needs, that's a big new area of opportunity for Feedonomics, and they can handle that no matter how big the data is. They're basically, you know, at, at scale, they're the biggest and the best in the world in e-commerce applications. And um, maybe just on that, you don't need to be on big commerce to use Feedonomics, right? So they're an independent company still? Yeah, if you're a, yeah. If you're a you know, B2B seller today, and let's say you're on any other platform, Feedonomics will work with any platform. You can use it on Magento, you can use it on... Oracle or SAP or Shopify or anything else as well. Um, we're open to any questions if anyone has anything come to mind. How long would it take to build something like that? You said it's using the basic functionality of that with some sort of special coding to uh, So, I mean, I've built that in a couple of hours, like just using sort of off the shelf theme, putting my data in there, having B2B edition enabled, some configurations and whatnot. So getting to that sort of out of the box level is really quick. Um, it's always quick. It's like all the other stuff that's like specific and th that you don't get is where the time is. So we can get, um, and, and sometimes we'll work really fast on a, on a client where we'll, we'll go live, get that value early and then start to build upon that. Um, but I think it's like we were talking about before, like really making sure internal stakeholders are on board and that they can see value in this and that this is actually enhancing what they do and saving them time or making them more productive as a as a uh, employee so 
Um, we've really, like that change management piece is not something that you want to just rush by kind of just um, throwing up the standard option necessarily, but it gets us a, a long way down the path very quickly. Yeah, I mean, a difference about big commerce is our positioning on our website is we're enterprise e-commerce simplified. The simplified comes from the fact that originally, Eddie and Mitch here in Sydney built it for small business. Well, now we serve the world's largest businesses. We have, you know, Procter & Gamble's doing all of its brands around the world and many other giant industrial companies. But the functionality, I mean, you could go on and build a B2C store in a couple of hours. In fact, I did that back in 2015 on a store that's still running to this day. So we make it faster, easier, and less expensive to create a B2B or B2C site than any other e-commerce platform. And it helps that we're software as a service, right? The functionality is served up over the web. You don't have to worry about hosting and security and uh, bug fixing and all this kind of stuff because it's just out of the box with us. Did a shared check out for your BC and B2B? Yeah. yeah. It, it is, uh, but it can be separated as well. So, um, but with this, you can control what payment methods are available to B2B. So um, a B2B customer can pay with a purchase order. They can put their purchase order number in, they can send that in and pay it later. Um, or they can pay with store credit if, if you've issued that through the platform. But um, yeah, we do have control over how the checkout is actually done. And it's typically an area we'll, we'll customize as well. Is there any out-of-the-box support for organizations with buyer hierarchies where you've got organizations, branches, buyers within organizations and, and things like that rather than, I guess, the user management form? Yes. Um, we have some support for that. We're talking about actually creating companies as an object within the big commerce platform. That's a pretty big project. Um, and something I think we're probably going to tackle over the next year or two. Um, but today we have a reasonable amount of functionality that allows you to do that. And, and then a second question around, I guess, that leads into price books and multi-pricing you know, hierarchies and structures. Yeah, that's something that we're really, really good at. And we've had price lists you know, for very sophisticated B2B use cases since 2016. I think it's when we first went live with that. So it's very mature functionality and a core part of our capabilities. Yeah, we, um, yeah, Priceless is, I think, one of the strongest features. Um, and to your first question, there's, apart from what you see here, there's also customer groups and there's customer segments that you can use to define like more specific um, attributes against a customer. Um, but Priceless, we, we had a client a while ago who was on WooCommerce, they're a promotions company, and they needed bulk pricing at a variant level, which just wasn't available. Um, but with Priceless, you can have as much bulk price tiers as you want at a variant level and manage that to a price point, or keep it simple and just do like percentage discounts. So it's actually a very powerful tool um, and very easy to use. We, we've actually extended that doing local pricing. So we have a client called Tradelink. Um, they sell plumbing supplies around the country. Um, they have different pricing for different branches. Um, so we've used price books to, uh, or it's called price lists, um, to do local pricing. And then we've joined the user in that session to the right price list so that they're seeing pricing that they would get in their local branch. We also do like paid promotions, buy one get one free, like Yeah, we have very advanced promotions capabilities as well as APIs that allow you, if you know you have some very unusual configuration that we can't support out of the box, you can ingest that from external. But our own built-in uh, configurations, I think, are truly enterprise level. Yeah. Approved workflows. So you've got a buyer and a, an approval. So uh, I'm not sure if you saw it, but when you can create a user here, so as an admin of this company's buyer portal, 
I can create a junior buyer or a senior buyer. So there's an approval workflow in that. Um, click and collect locations. Do you provide the ability to access multiple locations? Yeah, we, we've actually, um, I'd say, innovated on that over the last few years working with omnichannel retailers. So, uh, and we've developed a product off the back of that where we are localizing the experience for the local customer. So click and collect is part of that. So we're looking basically based on location and the closest um, store. We are then looking up the inventory for that location, saying whether it's available or not. Um, in some cases, we'll put a rule to disable click and collect for that location because it can't actually be fulfilled in the time that they would want. Um, but if the inventory is there, we'll allow that click and collect to go through. And communication to fulfillment team, that's business. Yeah, so um, we had one client witness shoes. Um, all, of their, um, all of their fulfillment is from the store. So they have uh, 110 stores around Australia. Uh, the unique thing with shoes is the shoe has to actually be checked before it's shipped. Um, because people try on the shoes in the store, it can get scuffed, they can't necessarily ship that, um, even though the system says it's in the system. So we built a, a, a workflow where if someone orders, uh, and this is for click and collect, but also for same day shipping, um, where we would want the, the store that's close to the customer shipping that, that product. So when that order came through, we'd send out a notification to the store and it had a accept and reject button and they would look at all the stock, they'd check it, and they'd accept it or reject it. If it rejected, it'd go sort of through a list that we generated, um, and it'd go to the next most logical store to fulfill that. Um, if they accepted it, we generated a consignment in Star Trek so that a courier would be booked to come and pick up the order. So we really looked at that whole sequence and made sure it was as efficient as possible. Any other questions from the audience? We could talk about any of a number of things. Yeah. So uh, raise your hand if you're anybody in the audience who is a, a potential B2B seller but not selling via e-commerce today. OK, so everybody here uh, is doing e-commerce if you're a B2B seller. There are so many flavors of this and how you can expand, but I think one of the most exciting areas, if you've already gotten started, right? So crawl, walk, run, it sounds like everybody's either walking or running a little bit already. One of the things we like most about big commerce is your ability to take whatever your starting point is today and then expand on it. Expanding on it can be adding new storefronts for different geographies, it can be adding new storefronts for different uh, customer segments you want to sell to. Maybe you're already B2B to one segment, commercial, but you want to add contractors. Maybe you want to add B2C to your B2B or vice versa. And you can do all of that with additional storefronts. You can add third-party channels that you want to sell through, like marketplaces. And that's one of the things that Feedonomics can very much facilitate is getting your catalog into a third-party marketplace that you want to sell to. They may already have that integration, in fact, on the receiving end. Or new advertising channels. Um, adding your point of sale and connecting your point of sale capabilities to your online selling. Because for many B2B sellers, they're actually today disjointed. Right? You don't have a a connection between offline and online. Uh, these are all the ways you can grow over 10. You can add new brands and sub-brands. Uh, you can create new brands. You can bring brands into what you're doing today. Um, and with our multi-storefront, it can all be under one single master account, which saves you integrations, because you prefer not to have to repeat your ERP integration or other things for each of your various storefronts that you're operating from. Out of interest, um, so you guys are all selling online. Out of interest, how many are selling with on a SaaS platform versus a custom or monolithic SaaS? Yep. 
and raise your hand if you're selling with on-premise software. Uh, on-premise means you own the software. You've got to you've got to do the software engineering to manage, run it, bug fix it, secure it, all of that. Anybody on Magento or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, historically, that's what most of the B2B platforms were. And going back to the earlier question, why did it take longer? A reason was that's a lot harder to manage than SaaS, but SaaS was sort of late um, to really serve B2B. And that's where we're trying to be a very much leader. The nice thing is that buyer portal and the invoicing that you just saw has been created within big commerce in the last two years. This is not user experience or code from 10 years ago, 15 years ago. It's basically the very most modern functionality with the best user experience that we could think of, uh, all creative native into the platform, which you know, I think is great for any company who is either migrating or starting from scratch because you get to use that very up-to-date user experience with the most modern of technologies. All right, two minutes left. Any other questions? Yeah. What's, what's the migration process like? Is it essentially building something brand new or is there the ability to kind of take existing platform and data and bring that across? Yeah, more the latter. So, um, I mean, if there's existing platforms, like let's say there's an ERP or a PIM or something in place or a CRM or marketing automation platform that you want to keep, we just fit you know, the new technology in with that. Um, if there's, uh, like, like I was saying before, like if the ERP is there and going to stay, there might be ways that we can utilize information directly from the ERP. Um, so it might be surfacing, like for example, offline orders. Sometimes we do with omni-channel retailers where there's orders that haven't come through the website, but we want to show it through the, the buyer's portal. So they have a full record of all of their um, previous orders and invoices to pay and their, their statements. So, um, yeah, very much like utilizing what's there. We've done tens upon tens of thousands of migrations. In fact, I would guess that the meaningful majority of our enterprise customers are migrations rather than start from scratch stores. And for those migrations, we have our own team internally that does data migrations, meaning catalog, orders, et cetera, from you know, leading platforms all the time. Now, that doesn't mean we're gonna do all of them. If it's uh, very customized or complex, typically a system integrator will do that. Um, and so you have that option of either exporting the data into big commerce yourself or via our, our own data team or via an agency or systems integrator that you use. And if you work with a partner like Matter, they'll help you figure out which is the cheapest and easiest to get that done. I think time's up, thanks. Thanks for coming Thanks everybody. everybody, appreciate it.